the atoms. Okay, the continuation of organic chemistry basics, the reaction intermediates. When I say reaction intermediates, you know a reaction? Make sure when you say, you talk of the reactants, you talk of the products. There is someone intermediate, there is someone in between them. Who is that? Those are the reaction intermediates. They are not seen, they are not valued, their presence is not seen. But it's just like salt. I would say this is just like salt. You know salt, you won't see salt in the food. But salt is there in the food. And its presence is important. You, you know the value of salt only when it is not there. Similarly, uh, this reaction intermediate is something that quickly appears and disappears in the middle of a reaction. For example, if you have a set of reactants turning into a set of products, in between there comes the reaction intermediates. So these are short-lived species. They don't live for a longer time. They die soon. That means the reactant gets converted first to a reaction intermediate. That reaction intermediate converts to a product. And this is actually the meaning of reaction intermediates. I call them intermediates because they are not going to be stable. Uh, they are less stable than the reaction reactants and the products. There are nearly some five types of reaction intermediates. First, we'll study about carbocations, otherwise called as carbonium ions. Okay, starting from carbocations or carbo carbonium ions, cation, you know, a positively charged molecule is called a carbocation or a positively charged atom is called an ion. And here, when I say carbocation, a positively charged carbon atom or carbon molecule, okay, organic molecule. So here, I need some. I need a carbon with a positive charge. We need the structure. We need the stability. We should see those things. See a carbocation. A simple carbocation. I can represent it. Will be a metal carbocation. Okay. Whose structure I say is sp2. It is planar, or I can say trigonal planar, according to VACPR. It is like a plain, plain like structure. So when I have carbon here, one hydrogen over here, one hydrogen over here, the other hydrogen over here, and the carbon is going to carry a positive charge. Now, this is a carbocation. Carbocation is positive. And how does a carbocation actually form? It forms in a heterolysis reaction. That is, when I have a carbon, for example, I have CH3Cl. Now you know, Cl is electronegative. So what can Cl do? It can cleave the bond, the, the, if this bond is going to cleave, the bond can cleave in a way that both electrons are going to go to the chlorine because chlorine is an electronegative. So I am going to cleave the bond in a way that both the electrons, this is called heterolysis. Hetero is unequal sharing of the bond when it, once when it is cleaved. So what do I get here? I get CH3 becomes positive because the two bond, both the electrons are now going to the chlorine. Yes, Cl minus. So here comes, here I form a carbocation by heterolytic breaking or heterolytic fission of a carbon, some uh, atom, usually electronegative bond, atom bond. This is carbocation. So we have learned about the structure, how it is plain and uh, its hybridization. Now let's learn about its stability. So usually you see carbocation is positively charged. What can give it stability? More of electrons. So more of electrons in the sense somebody should be electron willing to donate electrons, right? That can be, uh, I think if you if you had watched the video on hyperconjugation, the electronic effects video, there we have talked about hyperconjugation and said how well the alpha carbon to the carbocation can donate its sigma electrons for the stability of the carbocation. Okay, I'll show you that again. So. This is a carbocation attached to an alpha carbon. So see, I have an alpha carbon. This, the immediate carbon is called alpha carbon, which has got three alpha hydrogen atoms. Now, hy through hyperconjugation, each of the carbon hydrogen, the alpha carbon alpha hydrogen can donate its sigma bond, this electron, to the carbocation to make it more stable. Okay, the carbocation has got okay, to make it more stable. So if there, are going to, if there are three alpha hydrogens, they are stable. If there are going to be five alpha hydrogens, more stable. Seven alpha hydrogens, more stable. Greater the number of alpha hydrogens, right away with the stability. So, that is why I can say tertiary carbocation is more stable than 
secondary, more stable than primary, more stable than methyl, methyl carbocation, the simplest carbocation. This is entirely dependent on the hyperconjugated effect. The second effect that comes into place is the plus I effect. Both together give the give rise to the stability. One is hyperconjugative here, I said, the one is plus I effect. When I say plus I effect, again the same thing. I'll draw it and show it for you. Okay, fine. Now here are the structures for you. See, this is a tertiary carbocation, a carbon carbocation with three carbons attached to it. And now we count the number of alpha hydrogens. See, it's going to be three, 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 because all are alpha carbons. So it is nine alpha, nine alpha hydrogens. Come to the secondary case, three and three. This hydrogen has not been, shouldn't be counted because uh, what is an alpha hydrogen? Hydrogen attached to the alpha carbon. There is no alpha carbon. Therefore, direct hydrogen shouldn't be counted. So, 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 high alpha hydrogens. Here, it is only 3. So, 3 alpha hydrogens. So, when you compare the stability, that is why we say a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary, than a tertiary. Then comes your methyl. Methyl carbocation has got no alpha hydrogens. So, it's not going to be as stable as these. The second thing that comes into place is the plus I effect. You know, alkyl groups are more uh, electron donating in nature, no? electron releasing groups there. They are going to show plus I effects. So because of the plus I effect, they are going to give the electron to the carbocation. See, here there are three groups. Three groups shall give the electrons. Here two groups will give the electrons. Here one will give the electrons. So you know the stability. So we need more groups to give electrons so that the charge of the carbocation can be minimized. That is why I say tertiary is more stable. So both their effects support the fact that tertiary carbocation is more stable than the secondary, than the primary, then comes the methyl. But there is another question, this one. That is, when I have tertiary carbocation, one with the phenyl, the other one with the methyl. Now which is going to be stable? Here I will say, the phenyl is more stable. The tertiary uh, carbocation with phenyl groups is going to be more stable. Why? Because here, in addition to these kinds of effects, hyperconjugative effect, uh, you don't have to talk about hyperconjugative effect here. The prime effect operating here is resonance. Because of resonance, you know, you have, you know, when you think of phenyl ring, it's benzene, C65 ring, benzene sort of ring. That ring, you have resonance. Resonance is even more powerful than these effects. So, when you have to compare between resonance or the hyperconjugative or plus I effect, give more preference to resonance. Resonance, is, resonance gives a maximum stability, then uh, your uh, hyperconjugation or plus I effect can give the stability for a carbocation. So first, resonance. Okay, Please remember, resonance gives the most stability for a carbocation. So this is all about the carbocation. The second important type of reaction intermediate is free radicals. We will be learning about carbon free radicals. Then let me tell you what are free radicals. Free radicals are those that cause aging in us. We age. Every second by second, we grow older than we wear, we wear earlier. That is because of free radicals, lots of free radicals, different types of free radicals produced in our body. So, free radicals, how were they produced? You know, the ozone layer has a hole. That's again because of free radicals, chlorine free radicals. So, they are quite dangerous species, okay? But quite useful in your reactions as well. Now, see, free radicals, how do you produce them? You have quite similar kind of atoms, usually atoms with similar kind of electronegativity. Those atoms shall uh, break, the bond between both of the atoms shall break homolytically, Homo, homolytic friction happens. That is, the bond uniformly breaks, so when there are two electrons over here, one electron goes to this carbon, the other electron goes to the other carbon, so that gives rise to two electro, uh, uh, that gives rise to two free radicals, okay. Free radical is nothing but a species with an unpaired electron or an odd electron. So even NO is an example of a free, a free radical because it has got an odd electron. Fine. Now structure. Let's come to structure. Yes, yeah, same like carbocation. Except for the homolytic homo friction, carbon free radicals are the same like the carbocations. You can apply the same principle, same stability, everything the same you can give for the uh, free radicals. So quite simple, the same thing I'll explain again. Again, the stability you look at this. Tertiary is more stable than secondary than primary. The structure, same like carbocation, it is going to be sp2 hydrolyzed. Um, so it's going to be going to have a trigonal planar structure. Okay, now it's going to be about carboanions or carbanions. Carbanions are 
uh, quite opposite to carbocations. So once you master thoroughly the carbocations, I think your almost all of your work is over because you will know how radicals will behave, how they will be, and you will know how carbanions will also be. So look at this. Carbanions are going to carry a negative charge. Again, they're going to be produced from a heterolytic fission. How do you accomplish the fission? Now, if I if I want a negative charge on the carbon, my bond now breaks towards carbon. That means now this atom is going to be electropositive. So whenever I have my carbon attached with some electropositive element, I am going to have a carbanion formed. Okay. Though the carbanion looks similar to carbocation. No, it looks like again the same carbocation but with a negative charge. But its structure is different. If you look at the structure, it is known to have sp3 hybridization with almost tetrahedral but actual so it should be tetrahedral but because of the lone pair and because of some repulsions the structure is pyramidal just like ammonia it has got a pyramidal structure okay just like a pyramid now stability opposite i said it is going it has got a negative charge it's like opposite to the behavior of a carbocation so the stability will be primary secondary Tertiary. The reason I can say is in primary I have less number or I have only one maximum number of alkyl groups. In tertiary I am going to have three. If I am going to have three alkyl groups attached to a negative center, the three so the negative center wants to stabilize itself by giving away its negative charge, not by wanting more negative charge. Correct? So this tertiary makes it more unstable. So the stability order is reversed as compared to carbocation. Now the structure, so this is it about the carbanion, alright. The last one is about nitrines and carbenes. Uh, these are quite less important, but maybe they might be asked, let's see them. The last two less important uh, intermediates for our level, okay, is carbene and nitrines. So carbenes are quite different compounds, you would not have, uh, I'm sorry, quite different intermediates that we might not have heard. It's a new term for most of us. It is a carbon with two uh, linkages or two valency and one lone pair is present. So it's something, a unique kind of a carbon species. Okay. So when you see, when you count the electrons around, the valence electrons around the carbon, you get to know that there are only six electrons. So you say these are electron deficient. Though they, they, though they do not have charge, we do not give the charge for them because when you see a carbon has four uh, valence electrons. Now imagine out of the four valence electrons, now imagine let us have a methane molecule just for understanding. Let us have a methane molecule. In methane, there are four carbon hydrogen bonds and the carbon supplies each of the one of the bonds. Now imagine this hydrogen and this hydrogen escape with their electrons. This is what is carbene. So carbene, thus we do not give a charge because the carbon doesn't lose an electron or an electron. Uh, it is just holding its pair of electrons but still it is electron deficient being uh, in a 6 electron valence shell. So it is electron deficient, it is neutral and divalent. Look at this. Uh, so it is divalent. But the bonded uh, valency is 2 for the carbene. Now there are two types of carbene, single carbene and triplet carbene. The questions can be of stability to the carbene, the structure of the carbene, geometry of the carbene. So when I say singlet, singlet refers to paired electrons. When I say paired, then the spin of electrons can be clockwise or anti-clockwise. That is like this or the opposite side. Like this or like this. No? So when I say paired, that means one clockwise, the other one anti-clockwise. This is a paired. This is called a singlet. So in singlet carbene, I am the, talking about these two electrons. The two electrons are paired. So you call them this kind of configuration is called a singlet configuration, singlet electronic distribution or configuration. So this carbene has an sp2 hybridization. The carbon has sp2. So you know only two valency. The carbon is divalent itself. So two valencies for two of the sp2 lobes. The, the third sp2 lobe is empty. That is where these two electrons go sit together. So you should remember singlet means they sit, they sit together. You know when they sit together they are always paired. Correct? Oppositely aligned. This is about. So you have one. The 
orbital that is not used for the hybridization is 1p. p is an orbital that is left. I have just drawn it. So just to say, just to remember, single carbene, you have both the electrons together. The lone pair, this lone pair of electrons are going to remain together paired in a, uh, in a sp2 orbital. Now when you come to triplet, triplet carbene, the carbene itself is sp hybridized. That means it has only two lobes. The two lobes are meant for two of its valency. So where do the electrons rest? For the electrons to rest, they take the place of the empty p orbital. You know that when it is sp hybridization, the left out orbitals are two, two p orbitals are left out, right? It can, can be px or py or it can be either any of the two p orbitals. Those p orbitals are them. So these are ready to accommodate the electrons, but in separated fashion. So one here and one here, they are separated. That is called a triplet arrangement. Now when you see which of them is going to be stable, singlet or triplet, always triplet is stable. The reason is, you can, as you can very well guess, here there is repulsion. The two electrons sitting together can cause a little bit of repulsion and uh, instability. And here, since they are in two different places, they cannot cause that much of a repulsion or instability. No? Now next is nitrine. Nitrine is just like carbon, so I have, uh, just like carbene, so I have given both of them together in one single page. Nitrine is the carbon, uh, just like nitrogen analog of carbene. So here you, your carbon was divalent, here your nitrogen is going to be monovalent with two lone pairs, okay. Here there's two lone pairs. Again, we again have triplet and single for nitrogen as well, but for us, we don't have to learn that much. This, is, this itself is out of the box for us. So let's not go too much. Again, when they ask about stability, triplet is always stable than a singlet, okay. Uh, we don't have, we don't need to have much information on the, on the hybridization structure for nitrogen. It's going to be too advanced. So let's stop with this. Hope uh, the video was useful for you. Please try to practice the MCQ problems on the same topics. Thank you.